okay guys hi welcome back welcome back today's video is going to be um a serious matter and i have my shisha so i hope i don't annoy you too much but it relaxes me just like a live stream i would have my coffee my water and my shisha okay so if the shisha noise is something that annoys you and i want to say also if talking about this subject is something that annoys you, all you have to do is not watch, okay? Because I'm going to say this once. I see a lot of comments from people saying, just give it up already. You gave your cat away. So that means that I have no right to talk about how something affects me in my life, apparently. So this is something that I want to talk about once and for all. I want to put closure to this situation. I want to have an official video, not just a live stream, which is why I didn't do a live stream. I want to have an official video talking about exactly what happened um, in a calm, truthful manner. You will see that my story doesn't change because it's the truth. Um, I also need an official video, like I said. Um, explaining the situation because when it comes to the animal abuse allegations against me which are complete bullshit um, there's different groups of people there's of course my beezers and my loyal followers who have seen uh, I've been on YouTube since 2017 and I'll just show you some clips of me and the cats um, since then on YouTube are you stealing my straw Sam what are you doing, Sam? This is why I ask you. What are you doing? You're beezing. These are beezing behaviors. Yes, Sam. Days. Days. Sam. Sam. <laughs> yes, you. You're good boys. Oh, yes, you. Oh, oh. Hey, big boys. Are these bees and behaviors? Hey? Who's a pretty girl? Pretty girl. Pretty girl. Pretty girl. Are you jealous that I was giving Sam attention? Hey? What? Oh, he just want treats. There's none left. He ate them all. You ate them all, you guilted me. Now there's no treats. Now you're gonna guilt me all night. All night. Every time I go to my computer, you're gonna guilt me. Yes. You're gonna guilt me into petting you all day. Aren't you? And you're gonna lick me. Yes. Hey, old girl. Tell everybody your age. Or is that rude? A lady never says her age. Isn't it true, BB Jeans? Hey everyone, so here's some songs that I sing regularly to BB Junes, to my friends about BB Junes, and they all think I'm nuts. So, the first one is, and I guess it's true, she's amazing, and I guess it's true, she's a girl, and I guess it's true, she's amazing, what she can do with those legs. That song was called, and I guess it's true. The next one is a cover, a cat cover, I call them. Um, I used to listen to the song Candy Girl. I think it was, was it the Jackson 5? Anyway, this is the B.B. June's version, so it goes. B.B. Girl, you are my world. Look so sweet, you're a special treat. Treat, B.B. Girl, all I want to say is I need your love. Each and every day. BB Jeans! This one is a cat cover of uh, Barbie Girl by Aqua. <laughs> She's a BB Jeans in a kitty world. <laughs> Lazy ass bitch. She's catastic. You can brush her hair, pet her everywhere. And another common song I sing for her that I just screech around the house all day, probably driving everybody mildly insane, is I just go around yelling, B E E E E E E E E. So those are 
there's just a few of the songs, guys. I might do another part uh, if I can think of some other ones that I usually sing to them. So I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I didn't drive you too crazy, and I'll see you next time. So as you can see, I've had, this is about BBJ. Um, Sam, my other cat, he is about six years old. Um, I'm gonna be getting him back. I have someone taking care of him. I'm paying for all his needs right now. Um, the next time I go to Canada, I have arranged with an airline to return him with me. And I have found a huge pen uh, with big bedding. So it's very ventilated, very open. It's not a small carrier and he's gonna be sedated. Um, anyway, it's for me to worry about, you know, and it's gonna happen. People bring their pets all the time. So yeah, um, he's being well taken care of right now. Um, so that's, you know, whatever. Basically, I moved to Kuwait um, to marry the love of my life and someone who's very, very good for me after having been in an extremely abusive, toxic relationship for almost two years. Um, so this person is really good for me. I love him. So I had to make a tough decision. I wasn't sure at the time, do I want to travel with the cats? Maybe it would be better to leave them behind. I wasn't sure. I had to make a fast decision because I was moving fast. I had one month back in Canada. I came to Kuwait, got married, came back home and had about a month to pack up my entire life and leave everything behind in Canada to come here in hopes of having a better life with my husband. I don't know why I'm villainized for that, just because we didn't know each other for a very long time. Love doesn't really have a time. I mean, it's it's different for everybody, right? Um, but so far, he's proven nothing but to be loving um, and completely legit, unlike what other people thought. But most people are wrong about me and my life, and that's what frustrates me about it. Um, if I'm happy in my life, if I'm if I'm a mess in my life, I should say, they they have to pick that apart. And then when I become happy, they have to pick that apart. So there's just no winning. But this is a serious accusation. And like I said, there's different groups of people when it comes to the abuse allegations. There's my Beezers who 100% believe everything they've seen my relationship with the cats they know I would not abuse my cats um so I'm just ad addressing these defamatory accusations um okay sorry some people smoke shisha some people smoke cigarettes 10 packs when they're doing a live stream some people smoke weed I smoke my shisha um so and then there's people who just are this person who's spreading the rumors. Chinians, those are her fans, we call them Chinians, um, who just believe anything this person says just because they hate me. Um, hate for someone will cloud your judgment and it doesn't matter what I say. Some people are not going to believe me, that's fine. After my video, if you don't believe me, then that's fine. I'm also turning off comments for this video because there are people who just don't want anything good to be true when it comes to me. Um, I'm not 100% innocent, but I'm not an animal abuser. So then there's also people who... Um, who were supporters and then believed this stuff. And because of that uh, defamation, they are no longer supporters. So, again, believing the worst of me without knowing the full situation. So here it is. Um, it's complicated. Again, I said when I came back to Canada, I had a month to pack up my whole life. And it was really traumatic for me. It was really, um, I still dream about the cats. Um, and I wish I had done things differently. But I was cramped for time and I wasn't sure what to do. Um, part of me was listening to the influence of people as well, uh, varying opinions like, you know, um, don't put your cat down. 
um, don't give your cat away, um, give your rehome your cat to someone, blah blah blah. So basically, the only options I had when it came to the cats were um, euthanasia for the older one. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, rehoming or um, bringing them to Kuwait with me and I decided that bringing them to Kuwait was going to be was going to be I thought at the time that you know it was going to be very traumatic for the cats because even taking them to the vet was very traumatic for them they were very um, nervous and afraid so bringing them <laughs> bringing myself to the Middle East was a huge uh, feat and so bringing two cats and one of them being um, in their 20s like 1920 she was basically I had her um, I got her 2004 and she was one to two years they said at the shelter um, where I adopted her from so she's an elderly much elderly cat living past life expectancy Okay, so for her, definitely it wasn't um, a good idea. Now, before I went to Kuwait the first time, I clipped their nails. I have nail clippers. It was not easy. I had to have help because it was <sighs> my one cat, my older cat, BBJ, she freaks out and shrieks very loudly if we touch her paws at all. Um, in any regard, if the nails are even cut already, if they're in good condition, whatever, she just doesn't like it having her paws touched and she's I don't know if like she's more senile now but she's become more moody as she's gotten older she um I was told by a vet that she has arthritis because she's older um she was developing kidney issues so um I know that someone said that she had a urinary tract infection which of course um is not completely unnor um it's not unheard of with elderly cats they have kidney issues and I knew this now that's she had a lot of health issues and rehoming her after having her for so long I thought would be traumatic and sometimes the humane thing to do is euthanize your pet if that's the case and what I was planning on doing when I came back to Canada was bringing her to her regular vet which I did have appointment for to to determine with the vet if that was the best option for her or if she was going to if it was okay to be rehomed so I didn't want to you know rehome her to someone who would be taking on all these problems for her and I didn't want her to go through having to adapt to someone else um, and I was a little afraid of where she was going because truthfully people can lie all day all day when you rehome them you don't know the truth is what happens and that's what happened to me I was deceived I was lied to my cat was actually stolen and she's nobody knows how she's doing today or where she is so I had to make a tough decision and it was traumatic for me because I loved those cats they were my babies I had my best friend and roommate at the time take care of them for me he's lived with them for many years and um, maybe people think that they could have been better taken care of there's always people that are gonna think that um, yeah their eating area could have been cleaner sometimes um, we were both dealing with severe depression and a lot of problems and we were neglecting ourselves but they were always fed I don't know where the story came from but we starved them they were always fed BBJ always cries she's a very vocal cat and especially as she started aging she became more and more whiny okay so but trolls and internet haters um called animal protective services on us three times they um came in they came in and each time left satisfied that the cats were not abused and they were fine, uh, which is their job. So um, yeah, their area could have been cleaner. I will give you that. That is neglectful. Um, it should be a lot more tidy. Most of their lives it was. Like I said, there was a time where we were um, depressed and even neglecting our own, um, our own selves. 
by the way, I know this video is going to anger a lot of those people because they don't want anything to be true. They don't like the truth. They get angry with the truth. They want their own narrative to be true so that they have content and a fan base to um, think they're credible people, but they're 100% not. So let's get into this person who um, has the cat now and is lying about it and um, the, a bit of the history on that because there are new people here and that's also why I'm doing this video. New people who come here thinking that I'm an animal abuser, etc, etc. I think that they deserve this explanation as well. So there's this person, um, I will not mention their name. I don't want to bring attention to their channel. I know they would love that. And they're probably very happy I'm even acknowledging their existence. That's what they live for. And you may think I'm exaggerating or tooting my own horn when I say that. But if you were to see this person's channel, they cannot have an existence on YouTube, a successful existence, without being a huge lying piece of crap. Um, their entire content is ripping off my content. So anything I do, a vlog with my husband, simply eating on camera, going live and talking to my fans, they have to use that as their own content. And they sit there like a coward um, behind an avatar, never showing their face. Um, but I showed it on my thumbnail. Uh, and actually, I could see why they're so hateful. No offense. I don't... I try so hard not to dig at people's looks, but from someone who's done nothing but make a career out of doing that to me, I can see why they do that now by looking at their face. So this person is a complete moron, uh, no content, no life. The minute I upload something, they just take it, go online and find fault in everything I do. Um, that's not reaction to me, that's harassment and bullying. And I mean harassment, like real life stalker stuff, where they've actually gone and like to my hometown um, to visit places I frequent. Um, they've gone to my uh, fashion show I attended and called it a fatty fashion show, fat shaming everyone there. When this person is also obese and literally looks like an egg on legs. <sighs> so just a complete loser and um they cannot have an existence or a successful existence doing any other content so all right that out of the way she she gained prominence under uh with lies as well claiming to have a link an inside link to um my former ugh, i even hate to talk about this person swordfish but uh, the abuser I was with um, and nothing was true nothing was true and I eventually caught on to that and just was like I don't want to have anything to do with you and since then they you know are big mad and just make content about me and try to ruin my life but whatever so now like I said she sits there on panel judging me when her life is a hundred times worse with the most gravelly smoker's voice I've ever heard in my life like she could be Marge Simpson's third sister, um, the one with chronic emphysema, and um, that's all she does. So yeah, like I said, loser. Um, so <laughs> like objectively a loser. Um, so she always has to involve herself in my life and this person um, decided to cause outrage over what I plan to do with my cats, well, as if it wasn't my life and my decision, involving herself again, causing outrage, like she's going to, she's not feeding her cats, she's not feeding her cats, because my cat was crying in the background, very vocal cat. I would never starve my cats, okay? Um, I think there was one live stream where Pete couldn't find, my roommate couldn't find her wet food where I put it which was solved like an hour later and they always have dry food out but anyway so then it was I'm gonna rescue this cat I want I, I want to rescue this cat um, so she wanted to look like a big hero okay and even though humane euthanasia is not 
cruel if it's warranted, which is why I had a vet appointment to determine that. I was doing the responsible thing. Now, what wasn't responsible of me, um, and I will take full ownership for, was even despite having clipped their nails, made sure they, their food was stocked up, making sure they were taken care of before I left for Kuwait, um, and I did miss them, you know, I obviously did miss them, um, but I felt like they were, you know, taken care of. They were at home, they weren't in a pet hotel. People travel all the time and leave them in with strangers. At least mine were at home with someone familiar. Um, so, I didn't realize the, like how often their nails would have had to been clipped. Now Sam scratches furniture, <laughs> like the beezer he is. But, so when I came home from Kuwait three months later, his nails were fine. They didn't even, they were mildly grown. They weren't ingrown, they were fine. Um, because he was kept, kept, kept filing them down probably with his scratch post and furniture. BBJ, however, um, shortly after I came home, I checked her paws and noticed when I saw them, the immediate thing, my heart sank and I was like, oh shit, you know, oh shit. They were grown in the pads, some of them. And um, I tried with the nail clipper to take them out, but like she wasn't having it. And I didn't, I thought, okay, I'm gonna deal with it when she goes to the vet. I was gonna have everything taken care of when she went to the vet. Um, should she, should that have been taken care of sooner? Yes. It was ignorant and negligent on my part to not even really think about that. Um, especially her nails grew a lot faster because as cats get into senior level, they neglect their care. They neglect, they don't scratch and their nails grow much more coarser and um, faster because they don't scratch anymore. She doesn't scratch furniture. She just kind of sleeps there all day. But she does still, she was still walking around and jumping around too. So I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I wanted to have her assessed by a vet, um, which was not this person's decision to make. Okay. So the irony and the hypocrisy of this person wanting to save my cat from euthanasia, drum roll please, is the fact that this person had two dogs that she apparently loved so much. She loved dogs. And by the way, she wanted to save my cat and she's it's she said on her live stream she does not like cats. So how is my cat getting the love she needs? Sure, maybe she got to the vet before I took her a day a day before I was going to take her, but I doubt she's getting the love she needs. Anyway, I'll get to that soon. And if people think they're going to comment on other videos defending these behaviors or just stating falsehoods, I'll just block you instantly. Thanks. Okay. Um, so she had two dogs. The one dog became chronically ill and she prolonged its life with all kinds of medications whatever she ended up having to euthanize that dog so she did euthanize a pet who was ill um okay number two she'll then say well bbj wasn't ill bbj is very elderly and has a lot of illnesses which when you took her to the vet you found out yourself <laughs> okay so number two she had a second dog that apparently had separation anxiety and was very miserable because the first dog passed away so she decided to euthanize that dog as well which that dog didn't have chronic illnesses apparently so i don't know i would instead of parading bbj's um vet notes online for super chats how about you show us what happened to your dogs we need proof of that how about that before you open your big mouth about my care, pet care. So you have two dogs euthanized, but you have the nerve to criticize me for wanting to bring my cat to the vet to see if it was appropriate for her to be euthanized. Given her age, given the fact that I had to move out of country and given the fact that she had so many illnesses due to her age, I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me. 
All right, so moving on. Um, her audience don't have it. They, that's why we call them zombies. They have no brains. They they can't they can't come to these conclusions themselves. So whatever. Um, So I had two things happen. I managed to rehome Sam Chibi to somebody close in the family. And um, they're gonna foster Sam now, actually. Uh, there's somebody else fostering Sam now. The first person, it didn't work out. They had to leave, move away and all this and that. So I was disappointed. And now that he's being re-fostered, I don't want him just in foster care. I want. I want him and I want to try everything I can um, to do to bring him now. I've changed my mind and I want him. So um, another thing that happened. So at the same time for BBJ, she was um, a tougher decision uh, due to her age and, and problems. So I made a vet appointment right away when I saw her nails and I thought, oh no. So the fact I never ever did anything to purposely hurt or abuse my pets at all whatsoever. Um, my abuser came to my home a couple of times and the last time he came to my home, he scared my cat. He didn't kick her like people think. He swatted at her and she became so terrified of him. I never let him back in my house again. He never came in my house. Um, I would never abuse my pets. So that is just ridiculous and 100% false. Um, she should have been brought into the vet sooner. 100% I agree with that. And that I regret and I made an error there. Um, but I was in Kuwait and I didn't realize that. You know, I, I whenever I, I did actually have my roommate who can contest to that and he's like a very truthful person if you don't believe me he um showed me her paws but the video chat was not that clear and that was about maybe a few weeks into uh, being in kuwait and her nails looked okay and even he said they looked okay so they must have grown in the remaining two months and i just didn't really think about it so um I made a vet appointment with her regular vet, okay, for uh, a couple, a few days later, uh, shortly after, I don't remember. And at the same time, I decided to try to look for people in case I could rehome her because I was getting a lot of messages from people who were like, you know, I have experience with elderly cats, I don't mind, I'll take care of her, I'll take care of her vet bills, blah, blah, blah. But then I told my mom about it and she was like, no, don't rehome it to someone you don't know. And she was so right. I should have listened to my mom. But no, I didn't. I trusted. There was a person I talked to. Um, I know that this person, this bully, online bully, offered to take my cat. Of course she did. Um, not because she cared about cat, the cat, because she wanted the clout and she wanted to use it for content, which she has done. Actually, she's made a very lucrative career of um, using my cat and the situation with my cat and the false outrage about my cat. She's made thousands of dollars. So of course there's an incentive there. And now, now that she's made the money, now she's saying, well, I don't wanna talk about the cat anymore and we haven't seen the cat since. So of course, as someone who loved my cat for so many years, I'm worried about her well-being. I'm actually worried because we haven't seen any video evidence that she's happy and where she is. I think she's with this person because there's a picture of her on the sofa that this person has. Um, we've seen this sofa in previous live streams. The person that I was supposed to rehome to is actually we found out she's in California so she cannot physically be there. Um, BBJ cannot be with this person that was supposed to adopt her. So I said no, I don't want, I'm not as if I'm going to give my number one bully my pet to take care of. Dream on, as Aerosmith says. Um, so she didn't take no for an answer. Instead, she decided to have one of her chinions um, say she's the sister-in-law 
and um, who she, she says is a sis, her sister-in-law now. Um, one of her chinions just messaged me on Instagram and was very persistent. I did show the, the DMs online. And for those going to complain that I'm showing the DMs of this person and their poor privacy is out there, I don't think they cared about my privacy when they came into my home under the pretense of coming to take my cat and lied to me about it. So the whole situation was just a lie and it was actually a trick and I don't really care about them at all right now. Sorry, not sorry. You can also see in one screenshot, they're pathologically cheer like encouraging me like, oh, you must live your life. What you have to do is okay, blah, blah, blah. And then to the whole time know in the back of their minds that they're really just going to be using this for content later. It's just disgusting. Bye, guys. Um, But the DMs, basically, she was very persistent saying, I would never talk about it online, blah, blah, blah. And you actually clear me. She said, like, you know, I'm a chronically ill person. I'm just in bed all day. I can take care of an elderly pet. I would love to have someone to smug snuggle with. You know, elaborate sob story and just kept messaging me. And I built a little bit of trust with her, even in a short period of time. And um, I said, you know, I checked my cat's nails and I do want to bring her to the vet to have, it, have her checked out before I rehome her is that okay and they said no 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 let me take care of it I'll take her to the vet you know so to me this person was very convincing and um sent me a picture of their home it could have been any picture but I mean that's the chance you're taking when you sell or when you sell something online when you meet someone online when you rehome a pet online you know you don't know for sure because you don't know these people no matter what so um So I said, okay, you know, that, that's cool. Like they really want to take her to the vet, their own vet. Maybe I understand that. So I trusted them. Of course, though, knowing now that it was actually FFG who took the cat because her brother, um, it was actually the, the bully's brother. And the bully was actually hiding behind a snowbank outside of my house, like in disguise, like a full on stalker, weirdo, loser. So anyway, um... Her brother came into my home. I handed over my cat in good faith and trust. Um, not that any people, any of these people have any more morality, sense of morality anyway. So of course they don't care about that being deceptive. <laughs> they think they're saving the cat who we have no proof of. We have no proof that she's okay. But anyway, so she took the cat. Of course she wanted to take the cat to the vet um, because she could milk it for clout, views, and money, which she did. Um, she went online after and was like, oh, I have the cat, you know, bloop, I have the cat. I took her to the vet. She was screaming. The cat always screams when you touch her nails. Not saying that the nails growing in wouldn't be painful, and yes, I feel guilty about that. Um, but they would have been taken care of by me. All of these problems that the cat had would have been taken care of by me. I would have assessed, been, she would have been assessed by her regular vet. Um, she's claiming that there's notes that the vet said the cat was abused for years. We have no proof of that also. The notes from the vet are not clear. And I could actually call my vet, who the cat has been gone to for years, going to for years, as well as animal um, control. Uh, animal welfare, sorry, and they could also bring out the documents that my pets are not abused and if they were abused for years Again, go back and watch those videos. I posted in this video of how abused my pets were What we don't have 
are notes from the veterinarian of what happened to her second dog. So she has two deceased dogs that she euthanized. Um, one for a completely bullshit excuse, in my opinion, for separation anxiety, really? Okay. I mean, give it a dog Xanax. Um, so she's just completely ridiculous using this money donations for a gucci collar the cat doesn't even like wearing collars she's elderly she wants love not gucci um she wants treats you know in love that's it she doesn't need a catio she has arthritis she can't even w barely walk i mean you know at some point it's just cruel to prolong life of a chronically ill cat who's in pain and suffering and they can't tell us they're in pain but that's maybe why she always cried all the time so anyway that's the story um there's nothing more to it should i have paid more attention to the nails earlier yes of course but as i explained all the circumstances it wasn't on purpose i didn't purposely try to hurt my cat in any way my pets in any way i loved them i continue to love them i have to close the chapter at this point because there's nothing i can do um I don't have the pets anymore. I will have one of them back soon. Um, BBJ, I will always have to live with the guilt of, not the nails, of rehoming her to somebody who um, I don't trust her with. I don't think that she's safe. I think that um, this person is malicious and um, just doesn't even like cats and doesn't have the right intentions with her the only reason she wanted the cat was for money and attention and clout and she got all that so i have to move on get new cats and move on with my life and ignore this from now on but that's the 100 percent truth of what happened and a um, bunch of mishaps um unfortunately ended in tragedy for bbj because again i don't think she's getting the love that she deserves and we have no proof of anything i mean why not just do a quick video to prove that she's okay and getting love <laughs> you know the last picture all we see is like an up close picture of her um and her fur was all cut weird and she looked unhappy wearing a gaudy crappy gucci collar but she doesn't even like wearing collars so um if you think that she's in better care because she's not with me then you're just deluded and just taking the word of an absolute psychotic stalker liar but anyways that's your prerogative so um that's all i'm gonna say about the issue now i'm gonna go on and continue to ignore these people and just focus on my Beezers and my new life with my husband and um, getting Sam back. But I have I have Howie as well. He'll be protected. Um, Sam won't go after him. I know Sam. He's a good boy. <laughs> but I'm going to make sure he's out of harm's way. I'm not going to leave him on the floor with the cat. <laughs> like, I'm not that dumb. I'm not dumb like the Chinians. So, on that happy note... Um, well, anyways, I guess that's it. Again, I have to close the chapter because it's out of my control at this point. I made that decision to rehome her and took a chance and it turned out to be the wrong decision. But I have to live with that and I'm not going to keep beating myself up over it. Um, I'm going to move on and hope that she's okay. That's all I can do. And um, just move on with my life. So thank you for listening to those of you who... Um, did take the time to actually listen to what I have to say. I know my explanations can be um, disjointed sometimes and hard to follow, but um, I'm talking from the heart. Um, I do miss those cats a lot and wish I had done things differently and just hope that they're being well taken care of. That's all I can do. All right, guys. Um, thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.